you have been given some idea of business of print. Today you have the opportunity to understand the business of newspapers, the advertising revenue, the ad edit pagination, and some of the other fa facets of advertising that bring them directly to the newspapers from two very senior media professionals, both from the Times of India group. Let me introduce them to you. Our speakers today are Mr. Sharad Mohan Merotra. He is Associate Vice President, BCCL, which is Bennett Coleman Limited. Sharad is a business leader with more than two decades of experience in corporate sales, channel management, and business development. Having worked with progressive organizations that is Apple, Airtel, and now the Times of India, he endorses core values of business ethics, integrity, and a collaborative work culture. Sharad has led many exciting and challenging portfolios in his career and is currently leading advertising business for the Times of India group from high growth industry verticals like consumer durable, telecom, business solutions, BLSI, and technology. Outside his work hours, he enjoys spending time with his family and friends, exploring new places, reading books, and leading a healthy lifestyle. Our second guest this morning is Mr. Rishi Arora. Rishi currently, uh, his designation also is Associate Vice President of uh, Bennett Goldman Limited. He currently heads the pricing function for response. Times of India uses the term response. They are the ones who coined it way back in the 80s instead of advertising. All other print companies use advertising, but the Times Group uses response to uh, stress advertising as a vertical. Rishi is a chartered accountant with 18 plus years of diversified experience in business and finance roles in telecom, financial services, and media. He brings a unique blend of business acumen and financial management, obviously, to the workplace. Among the companies with various work earlier are Bharti Airtel, Goldman Sachs, and Interstars before he joined the Times of India in 2017. So let's welcome our two guests. So, 
Let me start with print. I think this is an acronym that I don't know who made this, but this has been there for a very long time. So, as you said, you know, I think the first point perceived as the most powerful, incredible source of information. And I'm Jolikai, correct. I think that's where we kind of believe in, and we all know digital media and once again. Let me put it correct. I'm not here to discount digital media. We are a very powerful digital media organization as well, okay? But I'm just here to talk about print in particular and the credibility of print truly is unparalleled. The good without saying, because uh, you would have heard a lot of fake news coming in the media on, on digital media, but there aren't any fake news that come on newsprint. So newsprint is always authenticated. The credibility is very, very high, okay? And the R stands for ritual of reading newspapers. I don't know, I'm sure your parents would be reading newspapers. You know, you've seen them while you were growing, you've seen them reading newspapers. And newspaper reading is a habit in India. It's a ritual. I mean, my morning cannot start if I do not read a newspaper with a cup of tea, perhaps. You know, so I think it's a ritual, it's a practice, it's a habit that is very tough to kind of go away. Uh, and I would actually encourage you guys. I mean, I understand you can kind of the new news. Uh, traditional media, but I think reading newspaper is a great habit, especially when you enter the corporate world. You need a little bit of more detailing, uh, especially from the journalism side. You need to have a little detailing, you need to have the sense of, you know, the actual press in a way, you know, to, to start reading, start consuming news. I mean, it'll take a little while to cultivate the habit, but I can bet you, once you start reading it, okay, it will become a habit, you will be addicted to it. Uh, I stand for innovation. You know, it is surprising that we generally feel, especially with AI coming in, the digital is very, you know, you get a lot of innovations coming in digital. I'm going to show you some of them. Print today is one of the most innovative uh, advertising media as well. I'm going to show you how. Maybe you've not seen that, but I think it is very innovative. I, I'll kind of show a little bit of that. I've got some newspapers uh, with me. And of course, it's a very high ad engagement. Terrifically high. So guys, okay, so it is, it is like almost a noon time. I'm sure all the people who consume social media, you would have gone through multiple websites, your favorite, you know, portals of interest and so on and so forth. Um, any ad that you remember from the social media today? Not really, right? So the whole objective of an organization advertising on digital media actually falls flat. I mean, you don't remember. How many of you, when you're watching the content of your choice, and you get that ad, and you wait five, four, three, two, skip ad? Everyone, correct? Right? Or you enjoy that? You don't enjoy that, right? I'm sure they would have all put ad blockers. Yeah. So, so when so the whole objective of advertising on digital media actually once again falls back. Whereas when when you read the newspaper, okay, you see the ad because it is integrated well. Right? So you see that, and most of the time you actually remember that ad in a very profound manner. Did you see the ad newspaper today? No. Okay, no worries. But at least read them happy. Right? So, no, this is not today. This is sad. Okay, so anyway, it's a very high ad engagement. I'm going to see, I'm going to show you how it's a very high ad engagement and why a lot of organizations actually uh, are getting to print advertising. Just to give a little perspective to you. You know, so digital first organizations, you know, the largest of them, say Apple, Google, Amazon, all digital first, great organization. You'd be surprised that this year, I mean, this year, last year, last financial year, we have a new financial year now, their print advertising has been the largest ever. Digital first, pure digital first organization, We're talking guys like Apple, Google, Amazon, and Simple. So, People really go for print advertising because of very high ad engagement and the results they get, the impact that they get connecting with their potential consumers or buyers or all this stuff, right? And then of course, today audiences see non-intrusiveness. And that's where we kind of go to that skip ad very quickly in digital. In print, it is not there. Not the skip ad option, but you don't feel the intrusiveness. Because you're reading a contact in a, in a larger paper, there is no intrusion. It's not, it's not kind of interrupting what you're reading. So I think that's what really print stands for. Uh, advertising, obviously, on a print is either magazines or newspapers, Fiji, Tabi Crook, Canby, 
either consumers who can potentially buy the products or your business customers or anybody, you know, any prospects. Uh, as I said, one of the, I would not say the most effective, I would say one of the most effective uh, means to maximize awareness, but when it comes to building a brand value, it is undoubtedly the most uh, effective media, uh, the print is most effective media. And of course, when you talk about you get in journalism, if you join a print centric organization, advertising is important. Advertising is the major source of revenue for any publication. I mean, obviously, typically there are two sources of revenue. One is the circulation. So when you, you pay your newspaper, you must pay. Restaurants do not pay. When your newspaper bills, that's circulation revenue, and then there's an advertising revenue. While we obviously both are important, but advertising revenue, without advertising revenue, a publication house cannot sustain. That's uh, that's the revenue source. Okay. Uh, now when we look at what kind of typical advertising happens, you know, very, very broad ones. You know, you can either have a display ad or a classified or a tender parking notice or a garment. So so let's so this is the newspaper of this the set last year, two, three days back. Now this is uh, This one. So this is a display. So it's a big basket, once again, a digital organization. Okay? They want print so that people get to their website. This guy. Kind of this is display. Okay? Or it can be any size. This is also display. You guys can see. This is also display. By the way, you know, you see a shiny paper out here and you see not so shiny paper out here. You understand the difference? This is called GNP. Anybody? The full form of GNP? This is called a glazed newspaper, obviously it's called, it's called glazed, and this is called SNP. And what is SNP? Anybody? Absolutely, who said that? Perfect. It's standard newspaper. So generally a newspaper is like this. That's a standard paper. This is only primarily for advertising. People go for this shiny glazed stuff. This is called that. So all these are display ads which are there. And you know the end of this is just Saturday. Okay? Uh, multiple sizes, we've talked about it. Uh, and then of course classifies are those smaller ones. You know I've seen buy it, sell your cars, or your matrimony, those kind of smaller ones that are there, those are primarily classified. And then tender and all that. So let me so let's start with display only. <laughs> display is primarily a very high impact. This garner's image attention. You kind of look at this, you know, you kind of take a newspaper, can you miss this? You just cannot miss this. Right? Now that's a display ad. Even inside when you look at this, the bigger ones, you really can't miss when you're reading. Correct? These are display ads. Uh, it can be various sizes. It can be a full page, half page, quarter page, multiple shapes and sizes, vertical half page. I'll show you a vertical half page as well. Uh, there in this. Oh, this is vertical half page. Can you see this? Add like this. This is a vertical half page, horizontal half page, like this, or quarter page, or various sizes. You can have a smaller size as well. So various sizes you can have a display uh, ad coming in, and obviously uh, we should talk about pricing, but rates vary as per the size, the positioning, and the page. So we've kind of talked about that moment there. Second comes a classifier, which is the smaller, you know, those ads that I was talking about. So people who kind of advertise small, generally advertise by small business houses, consumers, you know, want to, as I said, you know, want to sell your car, you can advertise, okay. Matrimony is a very classic example of a small classified kind of an ad. A lot of people really, really advertise. And there also, you've got a little bit of a display to kind of stand out within classified. So that's also an option that we have. Then comes tenders and public notices, which primarily is, you know, inviting vendors to buy and sell or company taking over, those kind of notices that come in, which are also very, very important, but these kind of stuff, you will see, see these, right? These are all, you know, tenders and, and notices which are there. And then, of course, a lot of advertising happens by the government, okay? Uh, which basically is to kind of showcase the good work that they've done, you will see, if you read newspaper, you see a lot of stuff happening, you know, uh, the, our prime minister talking about various schemes that they have kind of some government rolled out or various progressions that have happened across highways or other projects. Uh, UP government has done a lot of stuff. So showcasing the progressive work by the government is primarily the government act uh, that happens. And the rates there, once again, are decided by, something called a DAVP rate, which is decided by the Directorate of Advertising and Visual Publicity, 
based on circulation, the kind of for all media houses they decide to rate for government ads. Okay, uh, so so that's how the here it is all decided by the BABP. For this part, it is all decided by us in terms of rates. Yeah. So primarily four kinds of you know advertising that happens on print, and we'll talk a little bit in detail as we move forward. But Okay, so Rishi is my favorite report by. Some of you are collecting this, we'll share the PPT. I think it's all going to be there. So my, my request would be focus on listening. Let's make it a little more interactive. Ask uh, and uh, you know make it a little more interactive. My objective is you know tomorrow you should really look for newspapers, <laughs> you know, and get to, to read. Yeah, let's make it more engaging. You want? Yes. We want you guys to talk. I'm not Karthik. I can't have a monologue, right? <laughs> so <laughs> let's make it interactive. So the whole objective is primarily influencing the influences, I would say. So effluent audience. Why would I as a brand advertise? And I say I am saying any brand, advertise, you know, to get to those effluent audiences who have got a pocket to buy their stuff. Correct? Or CXOs across sector who can buy and also influence within their organization, right? To buy the stuff that, that an advertiser is advertising. For SME startup ecosystem for various purposes, opinion leaders, governments, and of course, anybody who is an HNI could be a, you know, people advertise to get the money, right? By the way, you know, I'm sure you're aware that Indian economy, in a way, practically is run by the top, not even 10% of people. I mean, those, those are the people who actually buy stuff, right? So that's where most of the advertisers would really want to get it, right? But to get these people, I mean, there are certain basic things that have to have in an advertising, and that is very critical. A good printer needs to have that attention grabbing couple of things. It has to have a nice headline. I'm sure you remember a great headlines, you know. You would remember just doing it. It's a great headline. Think different from Apple. That's a great headline. So there are many such great headlines that kind of emerge. So it has to have a great headline, it has to have a great copy, it has to have some kind of a slogan, illustration, something which is, you know, kind of a catchy, attention grabbing that you can remember for long. Okay, and any slogan or headline that you remember for long becomes legendary, like just story it or think different, those kinds of things, right? Otherwise, most of the advertisers want to have, should have a catchy headline or a slogan or a great illustration or a great copy, copy around, right? And then, not just this, I think the positioning of an ad is also very important in newspaper. So, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you read books, right? For everything's digital there as well. You read books, right? So when you, when you kind of hold a book, I think, you know, your, your eyes move from left to right, top to bottom, the right hand side is always more prominent to read. When you hold, when you hold a newspaper like this, you know, your natural tendency is to look at the right side. I mean, that's how the, you know, our, our, our eyes behave or human psychology behave. So it's always the right hand side, which is the big one or three or five. That's how, you know, the odds are of the right hand side, even in the books, by the way, <laughs> it is common. Okay, so they come on more premium than left hand side. So you would find progressive advertisers generally advertising on the right hand side of the page. And there are few who advertise on the left hand side as well. But generally a progressive organization would want to advertise on the right hand side. And that's where people like Rishi Aroda put the high premium to it <laughs> from a pricing perspective. But then, you know, that's how we command it, right? And uh, so, so placement is also important apart from having a, having a great ad. Oh, that the beauty of print advertising today is that it practically addresses or engages with all the five senses. Okay? Anybody who writes to read books, generally novels, books, you read novels? You read or you, you do it on Kindle? You read. Great. So you would understand the feel of that paper itself. I know a lot of people, okay, who kind of smell also the book before. Right? You agree, right? So that's the beauty of a paper, and that's the beauty of a print in any form and print advertising. It actually engages all the five senses. We can even have a paper that can vibrate, obviously, with a chip. Uh, here. So, today we have a technology where in a paper you pull up a chip and you can actually hear a sound. So, there can be a sound pumped into a newspaper. So, there is a possibility. You can talk about certain so you can Google the talking paper. Yeah. There was an ad that was yet talked about, even, the, even though the ad is like 10 years ago. It was four seconds. So you kind of press and kind of did the horn sound kind of comes in. 
smell. This is very common. So this is very common. So if a newspaper with a with a fragrance or let's say a fragrance advertiser can make a newspaper advertise in a form that you get a newspaper or even a, a nice fragrance coming out. A coffee guys can do it, right? So you open up a newspaper or you get a smell of coffee, a fresh coffee coming in. Obviously, you kind of tend to then you know kind of sip as well. But that's how it is. Uh, taste. A lot of guys do the sampling. I'm sure you got it. Uh, shampoo guys or smaller sachets. Maybe I don't get any way does it very regularly. So small sachets. So that is also doable in a print advertising. And of course, sight. I show you some innovations. We also publish a 3D newspaper for Mahabharat. It looks like a 3D with those glasses. So all these things are possible in print, which in a way are a little advanced you know, when it comes to you know uh, if you really compare it with digital. Right. So great things are happening today on the print side of it. So at this time, let me show you a few things. So this is a specially made newspaper. There are a lot of uh, innovations around it. Uh, I, I hope you guys can see it, right? Everybody can see, right? Now this is on a obviously GMP. What is the GMP? I told you. They're listening. <laughs> okay. So in a glazed newspaper, it opens in the center. It's called a French window. So you can have, it is like this, and you've got more advertising out there. It's called a French window. Very, very popular amongst raw brands. Okay? Uh, and then these are called flaps. You can have multiple flaps. Once again, they, you know, it kind of, when, when a person reads it, they kind of look at this flap and read it, and then comes the main, main news. Right? So this also is very, very interesting uh, form of advertising. This is a super good form of advertising. It's called a panorama, super panorama. Look at this, larger than life, uh, you know, size kind of an advertising. You can't miss this. Now you can't have this kind of a size and impact in digital. You just can't. And you would not skip it. But there's no button to skip. Second is you would want to really see it because it is beautiful. It is larger than life, right? So this is possible only in the print. Okay, some more inverted kind of stuff. So it says the Times of India out here, and it says the Art of Coffee. So, wow, so, you know, beautiful design, innovative way to kind of look at look at things. And then this is called a center strip uh, or a belly band. People can call it a belly band as well. It is in between newspaper. Once again, you can't miss that. Now think of a scenario. It's a main first page with the top headlines, and you've got this air. Obviously, you can't, nobody can mess with it. Very, very popular, once again. Right? A great way to, to advertise. This is, say, a tower guy, or anybody who's got the kind of stuff with an inverted T coming out of it. So, great ways of advertising that people have identified uh, in the newspaper, and it is kind of gaining a lot of, lot of momentum. There are many, actually. Um, let me show some, some interesting ones. But that's what, okay. Now, uh, when you see this, I'll show you a So this is called a GMP jacket, typical jacket, wherein you've got this masthead, the Times of India, and then the ad starts. Correct? Here we have, if you see, even the masthead is integrated into it. It's called a seamless jacket. It commands higher premium. It's called seamless. It's called seamless jacket. The masthead of Times of India is also integrated within the jacket. Right? So that is also also doable. And uh, look at this. The Empire Coca-Cola kind of flowing. Beautiful. That's called an atom trap. You really, really can't miss that. Correct? And there are a few more. It's a great day. I mean the paper is there. I would love you guys to see it. Uh, because you know I can keep showing, but there are many. But the point that I'm trying to drive is that today advertising, print advertising, it is at a very, very exciting place. Okay, advertisers are uh, very innovative. They are experimenting in various ways. It's not just a plain vanilla half page or a quarter page. Advertisers today are open to advertise in a very, very innovative, experimenting way that actually catches attention in some form. Right? And there's no other great media possible than print to do that because it's large real estate as well. Think of that. You know, you would have all seen Apple ads, right? Apple ads on the newspaper. Have you seen the newspaper? Who has seen the newspaper? So the, you have seen. Great. Okay. A few of them have seen. Now the way Apple advertises is your MRP, that's the standard. MRP, 
your buyback price, your this discount, your Y discount, and then this cashback, and then effective price. Okay? Now if someone, an advertiser has to give that kind of a layout, telling people clearly that their MRP is 100 bucks, we are actually getting at this 60 bucks or whatever. Okay? This, I mean, you have to have that kind of real estate available to showcase that, right? And what better medium than a print to can do that, right? And that's why Apple advertises. Oh, really? Oh, am I not audible in the back? I guess there was a. Okay, so let me stand here then. Okay, fair. Cool. So uh, I like to see it still out here. But yes, I think that's so basically, the whole idea what I'm trying to drive is today, print advertising is gaining momentum. I would say gaining the momentum because the possibilities to advertise are endless. The way we can advertise are endless. Our creative agencies are getting even more creative for the print advertising on creating ads which are very, very attention grabbing. So everything is moving into that direction that print advertising today is back. Uh, I would say in terms of, you know, uh, yeah, as, a, as a choice for advertisers, okay? So this is one. Uh, now, these are typical ads that people do. There are very, very interesting ways to make, sorry, I, I, I have to go down. So there are very interesting ways apart from these, uh, you know, pure display ads that people advertise today. And let me just kind of tell you a little bit about that. They are sponsored content. Now, there are three typical ways. It can be editorial, supplements, and native advertising. So let's, let's think of a scenario when an organization wants to really talk about law of detail. Obviously, it can't fit into a detail. Let's say someone wants to talk about the technology, okay, which is uh, you know kind of cutting edge technology. Let's say, and they want to really talk about it. Obviously, it can't fit into an ad because if they fit everything into an ad, the ad becomes very cluttered and it will lose its impact. Right? So they come up with something called an editorial, which is a combination of advertising plus editorial, advertorial, okay? Wherein the editorial kind of section, they talk about the technology. In the advertising section, they advertise around, right? So, so it becomes like a combination. Same as supplements. It is typically theme-based, okay? I'll show you some examples on how the theme-based supplement work. It's beautiful, it's very contextual, it gives a great perspective and great readability to the users, to the readers, to the consumers, okay? And then, of course, native advertising, which is very prominent in digital as a media, right? Native digital is all about native advertising. I mean, after you search, you will have ads coming in, especially for that, whatever your area of interest is. Even in newspaper, you can have a native advertising. So there's a news, okay, and then there's an advertising around. A lot of things, for example, happens around, let's say around Diwali, when obviously all NCR is under the smog. The law of smog that happens, there's a lot of pollution. And you would find actually there's a news of pollution out there, and then there's a vacuum cleaner guy saying around it. Exactly there on the news. Right? The so native advertising today is possible also on the print side of it, not just digital. So obviously the, the, the native of native advertising is actually digital, that's how it started. Right? Uh, so a couple of examples on the on the theme based supplement I talked about. For example, when 5G was launched by our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, we came up with this times of 5G, right? Full possibilities of 5G, so it was very theme based, you know, what all 5G can do, what are the pros and cons, answers, opportunities, and so on and so forth. So look at that group people who are, and then we have obviously uh, kind of interviews and articles by the stalwarts of the industry. So. The, the CEO of Apple, Mr. Gopal Rittal, or the CEO of Vodafone, and so forth. All the, all the industries stalwarts came together to kind of put their comments on, on kind of a 5G, because that's a product for them. And look at who advertised. That's Ericsson advertised, because obviously they're building the network for that. Right? It makes a lot of sense to them to advertise into this, because it's kind of directly correlates to it. Apple advertised to talk about their phones, smartphones, which are 5G network. Right? So that kind of a supplement advertising, supplement based advertising happens uh, very, very regularly. Or let's say on the last uh, Valentine, there was a feature on Valentine's, you know, love, like the happiness. And let's say who advertised? Philips. 
saying the perfect Valentine is your partner. So anybody who is reading, who is ever interested in reading that content around Valentine, obviously this thing is directly. Perfect gift for your Valentine. Right? And they talked about those, uh, you know, kind of a... Uh, yeah, correct. So they did that. Same as, you know, let's say a feature on smart living. People like Samsung and that. Because smart living is all about consumer durable or home appliances products that people will want to keep in their household, right? And Samsung obviously is one of the pioneers around there talking about technology, talking about, you know, how their products can be part of the smart living of, of consumers. So they did that, or Dyson did that. So they got cleaners. So that's all smart living. So very, very, so any theme based supplement comes with a great article about technology, about whatever around there, about the ecosystem, and then there's a right fit advertiser who gets into there. Very, very interesting way, very, very effective way to advertise beyond those larger than life format. Right? Because this is contextual. People who are interested in the smart living are going to read that and then say, okay, this is great, and then we see the app. So, okay, I mean, Samsung fits into my smart living aspirations or Dyson fits into my smart living aspirations. So, so that's how it really works. And then of course, these are very, you know, kind of, a, it comes, very, they are very tactical. It comes for a special occasion occasion or a purpose. But this is regular. The so people who read newspapers would, would see a Tims, which is called Times of India, Metro supplement, coming every day with the Times of India. So there's a supplement that comes in every day, right? Um, and this is very, very city centric. So you would have a Delhi Times coming in, or I get, if I, I live in Gurgaon, so I get Gurgaon Times, you would get a Noeda Times, or anybody, you know. So, so it is like a very, very city centric. And these are all very feel good products, mean to attract and capture. It's a very light content, it's very entertaining content, it's a softer content. It is not serious news, news to say so, but it is about Bollywood, it is about entertainment. It is so localized that, you know, for example, you know, I, I come to know of a new restaurant opening up in Burgaon, primarily through Tim's. Because I know if they're advertising on Tim's, it's a nice restaurant. They would have made a good fine dining, right? So I, I come to know of that. Okay? So very, very localized, a very, very unique content. A lot of people, a lot of retailers advertise it because youngsters read those. Okay? The ladies read a lot of Tim's. So advertisers, very retail-centric advertisers, also advertise very regularly on Tim's uh, kind of thing, which is very, 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 very localized. So this is it. Now coming to a very, very, you know, I would say a nice topic. All of you are digital-centric. I mean, that's very, very clear, right? I mean, it is, it is very, very evident. Though I'm, I'm expecting that you guys start reading newspaper um, because it's going to help you having the consumption of news in a newspaper is a different platform altogether than this show. So I would expect you to do that. But then obviously we all understand today, especially young guys like you, um, you know, we get fascinated by social media, we get fascinated by the virality of an ad, advertising. I mean, unless something is viral, you know, we feel the guys have not done a great job, correct? I mean, we all kind of tend to look at things that can become viral, right? So, so I mean, Let's talk about a little bit of print and viral conversation. Print today has reached a stage where it has the capacity, capability to ignite viral conversations. As you say, you know, what ends up in social is social, right? Eventually, if something from print is ending up into social and becoming viral, it is social. It reaches to people like you as well. Correct? So, I'll give you some examples around it. So, what we do, I don't know if anybody has seen this ad. Either print or digital because it was very high on digital virality as well uh, through through uh, Times of India. So they came up with you know I'm sure you were you know you're all very very young when you're growing up you, you know your parents must be my parents used to say of course yeah ye padhai karo tumhe ye banna hai ya tumhe ye karna hai it's like a force fit I mean we Indians are kind of tuned to do that to our kids however we might say you know we not but we do it I also at times subconsciously do it for my kids. I mean, they kind of survived like that. So, you know, the, the campaign game is no one should do this to a child. A pawn waiter is a pawn waiter in a certain shape and for a certain use. If you're going to put it in the form of a water bottle or a, a, a kind of a, a dish, a kind of a soap or a toilet cleaner, it doesn't work, right? I mean, it is not meant for that. Correct? 
So they came up with an answer, no one should do this to a child. So we should not be forcing our child to do what you want them to do. They have their own identity, they have their own personality, they've got their own choices, and let them do what they really want to do. It was a great ad, right? And it kind of reached 9 million plus across platforms. It kind of had a great engagement on social media. LinkedIn had a great traction. And LinkedIn alone has 16,000 plus, uh, you know, kind of conversations around it. It was like reposted some 860 times. This is the old data. It might have gone a little more. But think of that. A print ad, a typical print ad that actually put the social media, I would say, on fire in a way. Right? So this was great. Just to add here, uh, this ad was on digital a couple of days and months. Right? It didn't create any conversation. True. The moment it was on print, you could see that. I missed that. That's what I wrote. A digital silence that exploded after that in TUI. They actually launched this and on digital, nothing happened. And once they launched it in TUI, it actually just kind of made a different noise out of it. Right? Wonderful, wonderful app. I'm sure the, especially the girls out there will kind of relate to that. Duff came in, stopped the beauty test. I'm sure, it's sorry, it's a very sorry state, but I'm sure girls listen to this more than the boys. He, you know, you kind of, you kind of a little fat, or you're not as fair, those kind of things, you know. Our, our kind of a beauty standards, our perceived beauty standards for women, a lot of kind of girls face that. Duff came in, it's called the beauty test. And I'm sure you were kind of, in a couple of years, you would, when you're getting ready for marriage, and if you have not found a partner yourself, you would give an ad in matrimony section. And you'd see, if you see matrimony section even today, you've got this, you know, Need a bright, slim, beautiful, fair, Lorca Balek as well. So we gotta do that. Right? So Duff find this great niche and actually they advertise where it matters. They advertise on the matrimonial page. Okay? Stop the beauty uh, you know kind of a test. And a perfect marriage, obviously a content and content is great content. Uh, very, very socially driven content that everyone is bothered about and of course a great context because we're talking about matrimony. We, you're kind of writing there, you're putting an ad, you're writing there, you need a slim, fair, girl, this, that, whatever. And I think a perfect, perfect example uh, of, of messaging, this actually once again put the things absolutely uh, out of the proportion of social media. This is a report by a third party work. Uh, we had 20% increase in brand awareness for Dove, 4% um, increase in the brand, brand perception, and of course it won an award in the prestigious Cannes uh, Royce event that happened. Cannes is the largest marketing event that happens in the world in the month of June typically. It's going to happen in June. So this advertising actually won an award there as well. Great. Now with this, even Dove was so excited, so inspired, they actually came forward and further you know, kind of a, did a campaign, a same stop the beauty test ad, and came up with a TOI, the main page, and kind of writing eight kgs extra, five shades, two dog, and then, you know, saying very clearly that, you know, in the, in the age when they should be very about the test, school test, why are you putting them on the test? Saying, you know, you've got a little more overweight, or whatever, you know, once again, perceived, uh, perceived notions around beauty. So, it created a, I would say out of the proportion viral conversation once again. All the, you know, I would say the influencers, big guys, marketing, you know, kind of a followers came together and supported this. And if you read this, I think this is kind of a phenomenal, uh, you know, things that kind of the road about. I'm sure you can read it. But, um, you know, look at this. The, this says, I woke up the beautiful morning and got a harsh reminder of what is one of the deep rooted realities of my India. So people got really, you know, kind of connected to it, they felt it, and they kind of expressed themselves on social media. And a lot of people did, they just certain examples, but this was like uh, everywhere practically. So a print ad, once again, talking about the capability of making a thing a really, really viral. Just did that, dubbed it. Now, to the point that it happens, but you have to also have on the right media. I'm kind of wearing a little bit of salesman hat for time. But WhatsApp did that. Okay, a great ad once again, but they published it was published in practically every media, all print medias, on September 30, 2022. 
But what happens on the social media, it will once again viral everywhere across all the platform, but nobody put the Hindustan Times, sorry, I don't say that, any other media house uh, kind of an app. Everyone put the TY newspaper picture and then wrote about it. So it has to have a great content, catchy content, in an innovative manner that connects to people and also on the right platform. And that basically, obviously, our group, which is the biggest Times Square platform, which actually works for WhatsApp uh, phenomenally well. So just to kind of show some results, I mean, obviously, they are shown results, but it kind of, you know, it has some 200 influences reacted on Twitter. For this app, for the WhatsApp thing. It, it was everywhere on LinkedIn, and obviously, DOI was mentioned platform for the innovation, no traction for any of the media tags. So it has to be catchy, it has to be nice, it has to be connected to people, it has to have that element of, you know, being socially viral, be able to connect to people, and on the right platform. That's what happened with uh, WhatsApp. Now, these are some examples of supplements. Today, I'll show you something which is very, very interesting, which has started happening offline only. It is not very old, it's a very, very new concept, which is there, and some, somewhere something, wherein we are leveraging that no other media house can actually leverage, which is the archives. Okay? I'm sure a couple of you would have seen Rocket Boys. It's very interesting. I've seen that. I have not seen it. It's the story of, you know, making those, that atomic bomb and launching onto the rocket. So, when this ad was done by Sony, we actually gave them a newspaper when it was launched from our archives. So, that was the base and this was the ad. So this, is, this is the first page. Okay, same as when Citroen was launched. Okay, that was the page we took for advertising. So, this rocket was launched on November 21st, 1963. Obviously, it published the next day, November 22nd, 1963. So, this newspaper is actually the actual Times of India newspaper on this date. So that was taken at the base, and on that base, there was a advertising gun for Rocket Boys in a very, very innovative manner. Right? And a great traction once again. Okay? Once again, it became viral. Uh, people really wanted to read that. A lot of people said, you know, it was great to hold a paper of 1963 and kind of read it across. You know? So, a great, great way to advertise had a very, very large impact. So this is another way wherein we are using our archives now to advertise and obviously the legacy that we have, the 180 plus years of legacy on, on our side, there is no other media house that can really match and we have got that capability to kind of build that and our advertising is just loving it. There's loads of examples now wherein we leverage our archival pages to advertise in the, in the most effective manner. Same happened with actually the special method story. Just to add it. Yeah. So, uh, this Rocket Boys 2 was recently launched. The client took a half day that all other publishers, all other publishers out there, with us, the publishers was just simply to use of archives. Correct. We replicated the same story again for Rocket Boys 2. And it is again a great success. Client is extremely happy. From a pricing perspective, we get the best. So, it becomes like a win-win for all of us in the ecosystem. So, the pricing had come in. But yes, I mean, it, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Our association for this was wonderful. Usually appreciated by uh, by Sony and usually appreciated by by consumers as well. Same happened for this. The Russian another story once again. Lot of virality around it. Lot of stories around the scam. And then there was an ad. I think once again became beautiful. Another great way to advertise is Google actually did. Once again, a few more digital first organizations when they wanted to talk people about not clicking the suspicious links or something that you're not aware of being internet safe, uh, talking about digital security, they beautifully integrated with us to recreate the common man by the legendary R.K. Lakshman. I don't know if you've read uh, these strips by R.K. Lakshman called Common Man. It talks about Common Man is always an observant and talks about you know issues that are prevalent in the in the society. So we'll do that over we, we jointly recreated the common man theme around internet safety, digital security, not taking suspicious things, not doing payments, but your payments, being a little cautious when you're doing digital payments, so and so forth. So, so look at this, you know, they when they wanted to talk about digital security and internet safety, they turned to print. Once again, it shows how effective the medium is. 
to talk to the right audience when it comes to when it comes to advertising. Now you would have seen that you know I talked about these larger than life impacts, you know, big ads, jackets, you know, these kind of uh, high innovations and all that stuff. So most of the time you would find that large brands, obviously these are, these are very premium inventory, they come at a, at a certain price. Uh, but in today's time, the things are changing to the extent that not just you know this high premium or high visible inventory, but also something which are inside pages actually are being leveraged in a very, very effective manner by a lot of advertising. I'll give you some examples. Now today, listen to this, you know, the sports page today is perhaps one of the, I would say one of the most read pages because you know, young generation is getting interest in sports. In India, India itself is getting interest in sports. I mean, it is, we have, we have now way beyond just the cricket, right? So we get so many sports happening and as a, as a society, as a country, we are kind of getting blind to sports more than ever before, right? And that's where brands are now leveraging, placing their advertising, advertisements on the sports page. Same goes with the business page. A lot of people now obviously read the business page. Youngsters are reading you know, business pay. I'll give you a very interesting statistic, okay, when you talk about business. Uh, we all know it's a, it's a common knowledge and everyone talked about it that when COVID came in, newspaper circulation went down, correct? It, it happened because we were not getting the newspapers and there was a myth that it can also kind of, you know, kind of get you the COVID virus and all that. So obviously circulation came down. When it came back and over time people had so much interest in business and markets and all that stuff, today our circulation of economic times is far more than what used to be pre-COVID. It is back and with what, in what way, in, in, in that kind of a style. It is far more than what used to be pre-COVID. So the interest in business is actually old time high and a lot of youngsters now want to really read the business page of Banks of India if they're not reading across time, at least the business page of Banks of India and that's where I think, you know, organizations are leveraging the business page as well in a very, very effective manner. So a couple of examples, sports page, business page, so not just those high premium inventories, the jackets and other stuff or innovation, but we have called it also innovation. But I'm saying even inside pages are getting, you know, kind of a, a widely used by these large organizations to amplify what they really want to say. So advertising, print advertising is kind of reaching a different state altogether. Who would think earlier that, a most of these kind of organization would get into inside pay because apart from obviously the larger in life jackets that they do with us. But still it makes sense because people who are using real time business obviously are a senior level guy in organization but a potential to buy most these. That's it. So a great advertising job there. So it's all about positioning, it's all about who is reading, you know, uh, your, your newspaper and what sections are they using, kind of leveraging in the most effective manner is the key today, right? And then when we talked about a 5D as a as a as a topic, uh, I, the reason I put this slide is very interesting. Okay, we also had a feature around gaming. Now look at this: how the advertising started working today. Obviously, when Xiaomi want to talk about a phone which kind of can be good for gaming, or when Apple is talking about a tablet which can be good for gaming, it's very natural. It, it, it's natural. But look at TVS advertising there, and TVS advertising there because gaming is primarily done by younger people. And those younger people buy bikes, you, you guys, you know, like riding with mobiles. So the connect was that the gaming section would be read more by younger set of people. Okay, and those younger set of people are potential buyers for bikes, so the TVS. Right? So it is all about having the right kind of a placement, right kind of an audience, being there at the right time, with the right content, and the right context, so the advertising really works and of course this happened. So this is what it is and, and I kind of touched upon the COVID thing, uh, you know, uh, kind of how the circulation went down and all that stuff, which is a story, which is the correct story but it's back. But if you really look at, after COVID actually people have started spending more time in newspapers. So people, so there were always people like that, which no guess about the newspaper, but I am sure a lot of people can is that, but they are readers who kind of read every page of it. And during COVID, they actually got hooked up to newspapers even more. So even today, the survey says that people who actually read newspapers spend far more time than they used to do before COVID, to say so. So serious newspaper readers are there, and then of course it becomes a very, very important media for them to 
find the advertisers. And that's one of the reasons, one of the main reasons that when you look at, you know, advertisers, the digital first, even digital first organizations like Apple, Google, and you know, those kind of organizations you talked about, or Amazon or Samsung, they did the highest in the print this year. Because of this, because the people who matter are definitely reading the newspaper even today. People who can buy their products are reading the newspapers and it's very, very critical for them to be where the right kind of an audience is there, people who can really buy this stuff. So this was uh, primarily in the print advertising from my side. Any questions uh, before I end up with this beautiful quote by Leo Burnett? I hope everyone knows Leo Burnett. Yeah. Everyone knows Leo Burnett? One of the legendary marketers who established this Leo Burnett Chicago base. Leo Burnett advertising agency. I think he put it, I, I love this quote. I mean, kind of summarizes the essence of advertising. Make it simple, make it memorable, make it inviting to look at, and make it fun to read. And I think that's what we're doing, that the kind of ad we saw, those are simple, those are memorable, done in a very, very innovative manner, they're very eye-catching, and of course, they're all kind of fun to read with, with innovation. So that was a short run print advertising before we need to writing. Any questions? I hope you guys follow. Can I do some quiz then? <laughs> no, anyway, so, uh, you know, so let's kind of move to the next session. But we are here in case you kind of have an afterthought, you want to ask something about advertising, uh, you want to ask, please.
Sharad has already articulated about most of these. Everything is already covered. I'll just summarize this quickly. So, one is scale, two is time, attention, role, and effectiveness. How print covers all these bases, all these five factors that define print, that make print what it is today. Right? Sharad mentioned newspaper is a habit. Right? He can't have his morning cup of coffee or cup of tea without a newspaper. I think your parents, my parents, even I, I like my newspaper every day. Without a newspaper, I find something missing. Right? Any guesses on how many people read a newspaper every day in our country? Any guess? <coughs> yes, please. That's a, that's, a, that's a good number. You are so precise, but uh, we'll I'll come to that. Any other guesses? Okay, so we have close to 15 crore readers who read the newspaper every day, right? And most of the newspapers in our country are reaching them, right? Except Times of India where leads the English front, right? Times of India and Economic Times. In English, we 50 percent of our we command 50 percent of readership, right? That's the power the Times of India, that Economic Times brand has, what uh, our group has created. English itself, we have TY and DT have more than 1.3 CR readers every day, right? And this is the population which takes in the decisions in our country, which is the most premium audience that takes the decisions in our country. So if you are selling it to them, you have to price it right. Time? Any guesses on average time spent on a newspaper reading every day? Sharad had? Okay. So average, so average time is over 20 minutes. So on an average, you, the reader spent over close to 3 hours in a week reading a newspaper, which is more than 25 minutes a day. Right? And it has only appreciated during a post-COVID. People are more interested in newspapers, which is why our revenue recovery, our volume recovery is has exceeded the pre-COVID numbers. So that's the power of print. Why people say print is dead, print will become dead print is back with the bank and so is TY. Some of our competitions are bleeding but print is back and TY is back. Attention, people are trying to want to know what's going on, right? So once you are hooked to Times Techies, if you pick up a newspaper, I am sure you will be hooked up to Times Techies every uh, insert, twice, which is twice a week, right? So. You get excited as to what is there for me. Just like if you are scrolling on Instagram and there are some ads coming up for you, you might become interested. Just like that, on print, you get hooked to if there is something exciting for me, whether as a news article, whether as, as a news, as an ad, which might excite you to go and uh, visit the store and pick up the stuff. Right? You read here, news for research, our international research says, 75% of readers look at each print ad, right? I'm talking about display business. They display large format ads, quarter page ads, sky buses. I'll cover some of these in, in the presentation. So 75% of readers, that's a large number. Rule, we talked about dub ad, shaping opinions, right? Sharon mentioned that. So print shapes opinions. We've heard about the, I'm sure you guys would have heard about the Teach India campaign that Times of India did. Right? You've heard about the Lead India campaign. You've heard about the Lost Votes campaign, which has made the parliament, we look at the Lost Votes. How do we get, how many of you are from uh, this territory and how many of you are studying from, have come from other cities to learn? So if you have to vote, you have to probably go back, right? to your native place or wherever it is. So Times of India started a campaign called Lost Votes, where if you can vote in, in Nota itself, right? So it is in discussion at the highest level in our country to reconstitute that and how to enable that. So that people don't have to go back to their native place to vote, which is a basic right, right? So print shapes opinions. If it is in print, 
you can trust it right we talked about fake news we talked about uh, a lot of stuff that is irrelevant on the digital world which gets popped up but if it is in print you know you are in safe hands your brand is in the right place so you are taken well taken care of right so you can the buyer will consider you because you are in a trusted place This is a front page news article from 31st March, self-explanatory, where Times of India stands in terms of trust index, highest amongst all the leading names that you can think of. Whether it is Google, whether it is Facebook, whether it is Twitter, they all lag behind Times of India. And the headline rightly captures this new survey, same story. Talking about effectiveness, the leading digital brands, digital first companies, whether it is Facebook, Meta, WhatsApp, or Truecaller, they all come to print when they have to talk about something important, right? They don't have any other medium to talk about. It is print that they choose the, as a medium to talk about it. So, you are you guys with me on the power of print? Do you guys understand or are there any questions I am happy to take up right now? Let's keep it engaging. You can stop me wherever you feel you have a query. Let's talk about this as well. Any doubts? You guys are here for physical learning, right? In a digital world. For a reason. Physical impact is very different. Yes, please. Sorry, I can't hear you. I'm saying that will it be more useful to put it permanently on a digital platform that or to paper that changes daily? If it's an important thing, important So, they do frequency ads with us. So, WhatsApp, Meta would have spent I don't want to quote a number, but it's a high double digit number, right, on frequency ads. So they have been a consistent advertiser with us. Because the trust has to be, it can't be one day. It has to be established through the period. As you rightly said, digital they do stuff, but digital people don't rely. You just skip the ad or you just move on. Or you, you would have put ad blockers to avoid that ad. But in print, it is right in your face. So, so just to add, so what happens is when an advertiser plans a campaign, okay, they generally plan for a specified time frame. Okay? So they do it with a launch generally or something, and then there are sustenance campaigns that happens. Right? And for that, that's where they kind of look at a launch kind of an ad and then they go for a sustenance frequency ads to kind of keep building. Now to your point that you know digital it is always there, right? Even for print, but when it is done, it is there in some form, right? I mean, it is there and then maybe it gets to social and then we also have a ty.com and other stuff which is there. So, so it is not that kind of just vanishes the stuff. But the objective of campaign is met for that specified time frame and for the limited time frame that advertisers really wants to build a campaign for. Because for, even for an organization, every organization, the business objective changes. The marketing objective changes. That's why they keep coming with a new campaign and new form of advertising. It's not that you will not find any organization talking about the same stuff forever. They will keep changing, right? So nothing is permanent, nothing is forever from that perspective. But once it's there on print, it is there. We gave an example. I mean, today we could pull out archival. We could pull out something which was there in 1963. It is there. It's print is permanent too from that perspective. It is verified, right? You can't put anything on paper which is not true. It has to have its own great worthiness. And that is why you see Times of India right being there. Right? You have digital companies, whether it is Facebook, whether it is Twitter, but they are way below TOI. Right? There is a reason for it. Because they are on print. So if it is on print, you can trust it. That's the core. And that's what all these digital first companies also believe in. Yes, please. So do you think you put the advertisement will have the same relevance over 10 years? So, uh, often, uh, it, so, I'll tell you, I just share some background. So I'm new to media industry, 
I my history has been largely with telecom. I worked largely with Airtel or Indostars, both are listed companies. Then a couple of years with Goldman Sachs. Media is my first stint. I've done roughly five years. I'm also learning like most of you. Before I joined, joined uh, Times of India, I thought print may be dead in some time. And every time print's obit has been written, print has come back with a bang. When COVID happened, there was no life, right? Literally. We were not even getting newspapers, right? Our circulation had trimmed down to hardly anything. Today, we are back with a bang. Our revenue numbers, just, just to give you a, a context, our volume numbers are back there on pre-COVID numbers. Right? So, we are here to stay. Rest assured, India, the, the, our country is very different from maybe a New York. Right? So, we are a print friendly nation and what the relevance that India has for print will never go away. Maybe we will complement digital. I am not saying digital will die. We are a digital organization as well. We have a lot of digital assets on our media site, on our group that continue to sell, continue to do well. But print is where uh, we command premium. We are the leaders, right? Our market share on volumes, on revenues is inching up year on year amongst print and at a overall level. Yes, please. Yes. So when uh, the newspaper out, so they didn't create any impact and so any feedback. You... So, Sharad articulated about the five senses, right? Talking, talking the talking newspaper. I think Fox Over was the one that did it first, right? You can Google about it. There are case studies about it that how it created impact. Even today, that talking newspaper is the talk of the town, right? But let me some, tell you something. There is a novelty element to it. Every plus, every client cannot afford it as well. Print is expensive, right? Just to give you an example, a GNP jacket, right? What you saw here, right? How do you, how much do you think it will cost to a client? If I have to do a do a Times of India all uh, markets, you want to say the four to five. One lakh. Okay. One lakh. Okay. Okay, we, just to give you an example, confidential in this room only, we charge 3 CR for this, right, for a day. You can't burn that money on digital in probably entire month. For all editions. For all, Times of India all editions. I'm just talking about Times of India, right. That's why we are Times of India, because we are able to command that value from the clients. The costing may be hardly anything. It is about value based pricing. I will talk about it in subsequent slides. We charge 3 CR almost for that, this inventory. So, and basic GNP just a two pages. Just this page and this page. For all of India, Times of India. So it costs a buck. So, so just to kind of, I think our answer is still not at risk. Uh, it does, right? So I just kind of address that. So basically, there is a possibility that people would have thrown because you know it was unexpected. But those unexpected things only create curiosity, the interest, right? And people then get that you know kind of into it. I'm sure people who threw it would have then played with it hundred times. Correct? I think that's where the objective is. It's positive. It's more positive. positive. See, there will be some exceptions. One percent audience may not like it. No, no. But, but ninety-nine percent is people you. People would have thrown it in. You know, it's a, it's a reflex action. You know, because you're not expected to kind of a paper talking to you, right? But then the fact that it was told you in a class, and you remember the brand, I think I think the objective the job, job is done. Sir, job is done. Sir, sir, as we have read in our story classes that there is a LPR, large page release schedule. So what is the effect of innovative ads on LPRs? So those are last minute ads. Uh, that come in, right? Every night we have some ads come in, and uh, as pricing, our life also gets impacted. So, we are talking about a case yesterday wherein the client had put a so we charge a different premium for a different ad, right? 
So I got a call at 10 30, 11 ish from uh, Sharad's team saying there is an ad which turns out to be an advertorial. So advertorial comes at a even higher premium. Right? So what do we do? So we carry that ad at low cost and meet our NPRS. Do we put a pressure on the client to pay that premium? Right? Five, within five minutes, the team was able to get a 50% premium on that ad and we could meet our NPRS. So guys, you know, so, I, so for media houses, Salesman like like me, you've got a day, you know, getting into meetings with the clients and agencies, and on evenings, you know, addressing with pricing and scheduling to ensure our clients that gets it so and has to get it. So our evenings are also busier. That. <laughs> scheduling is a big part. So we talked about this. I'll jump to private study. Any other question like right now at this stage? And I hope your answer, question is answered. Okay, so as I said earlier, a powerful print media means a robust client strategy. Some clients do say print is expensive, but they are all takers with us, right? So why is pricing strategy important? What do you feel? Yeah, say, you got something in mind, say. Say. So, our Engine the way it works is we get almost 90% of our revenues from advertisement, right? 10% is from circulation, ballpark index that I am giving you. So this 90% is very important to us. We are selling a powerful media, right? So we sell brands and many a times the brand that is advertising with us is, is less powerful than our brand itself. As QI we are a much powerful brand than most of the brands that advertise with us. So we have to ensure that we get the right value for our brand, right? So pricing is the value we charge for our products and services for the customer pays. Most important thing because it can make the customer walk away or it can make the customer take that ad with you, right? So you have to price it right so that the ultimate aim is to make that ad happen. Get the revenue, lock in that revenue, right? That's my team's KRA. Kyo rakha hai aapko? Right? Pricing is a business function, it is not a cost function. Right? If, so in response, we are housed within response because we are seen as a business function. Right? Our job is to ensure that we drive profitable revenue growth. It is not about only revenues, it has to be profitable as well for us. Right? While we are a response function, our KRA is revenues, we ensure that we drive profits around it. We don't sell anything cheap. We have to make the right margins, that's the core we follow. And obviously in this entire process we ensure that we build trust with our customers, we are fair with them, we charge the right value to them, we don't, uh, we are not unfair with them. See, I think this is a, uh, this is a category that doesn't have an MRP. I mean it's not, it's not the 100 rupees MRP, you go and buy it. And people cannot charge you more than MRP or no less than MRP is their, you know, kind of a call. So, you know, one has to be really judicious about what kind of pricing are you doing. It kind of suits the client, that suits us. We are able to deliver the right value, clients are able to derive the right value. We do not lose the scale because of pricing, but we do not undercharge them. So, you know, that's where I think their role really comes in. And along with the sales team to kind of really evaluate what is the right fit pricing and why. Maybe we could have justified it as well, right? The client. So I think that's where the role becomes very uh, important. So key elements, again, three out there. It has to, whatever price we charge, it portrays the value of the product that we are offering to the client, right? So we have to establish it right. A high price or a low price, underpricing it, will not position it right. So we have to ensure that we price it right. Build confidence in the product. If I price it at 10 CR, that the client may walk away, right? If I price it at 1 CR, he might he might say, why is DOI selling it at 1 CR when they probably sell it at 3 CR, 4 CR in the routine course. He might not again buy it. So it has to be priced right so that we get the right confidence from the buyer as well. Right? And obviously target the right customer segment to maximize ROI. I talk all about these in detail. So convinces customer to buy. So what is the ideal price at which the sales happen, right? You can't price it very differently. The sale has to happen, that is the quote. So a higher price product is generally perceived as one with higher value. So let's say you go to Amazon 
and you search for uh, Apple Earpods, you will find it priced at 20,000. You know there is a premium to it. It is an Apple product. It is priced so. But if you put, let's say, both Airpods, both are Shara clients. <laughs> both are his clients only. Both based in Delhi, Kolkata. So, but if you do a both Airpod, Airpods, you will find it priced at probably 1,000 rupees, 2,000 rupees. You know, you you are expecting the quality, the outcome accordingly, right? <laughs> and let's say the uh, you could also do a study later maybe on uh, the the pricing, the marketing approach that maybe both has. So the MRP is put in at 4,000. Through the year, it is probably available at 1,000 rupees. So you know there is a perceived value out there, right? So a low price will seem cheap. If I probably price a boat earphone at 300, 500 rupees, probably you might say there is some change in the brand and you might not even buy it, right? While the student community today is happy buying it because you know it is affordable, and you can probably use and throw after a year or so. So it has to give the confidence in your product, right? It, the trigger, the call to action to buy has to happen. That is the core. And uh, lastly, you have to target the right customers. Some customers prefer value, some prefer luxury, right? So every client has a different price for us. Hum chehra dekh ke dilek lagate hain, right? In plain vanilla layman terms, jaisa price hoga, jaisa usko price lagate hain. But there are Contrast as well. We we'll talk about differential pricing. Shall I talk about MRP just now? So we we'll talk about differential pricing. How we price our products? Any questions? So multiple layers. We price each ad differently depending upon the client, depending upon the category it is. A consumer durable brand would be differently priced. A luxury brand would be differently priced. A real estate brand probably I would charge the highest, right? They are a print friendly category. They don't go TV, they don't go radio. They take only a print, I'll charge them high, right? The different inventory, the jacket and a sports page ad are priced very differently. And different periods. If you ask an ad for maybe if I'm going vacant tomorrow on a particular inventory, I might give you a spot offer and take up that ad, right? But if you're, if you're asking the same ad maybe during festive, maybe during Dantiras, right? I might price it like a bomb, right? So different periods, different pricing, everything is different. Uh, we larger intent that we have is to ensure that we do the right value-based pricing. We charge the right value which the customer is willing to pay, where we can both the parties can meet and conclude the deal, right? Which is the most important part part for us as pricing, right? At times we do a cost plus pricing as well like a 5G features, I, I want to build advertising on that so that I can get the relevant audiences, right, to print, to take that 5G feature. Maybe that 5G feature excites you guys as kids to be, to pick up and learn more about 5G, right? So maybe I price it at a costless model. Competition is very important. You need to ensure that you know your competition. So in a market like Delhi, wherein I have in the Sun Times is a strong, credible competition, right? We need to ensure that what what is the pricing policy, what is the pricing approach that my competition is taking, and let's say in a market like Bangalore, wherein uh, we were talking about uh, in the break how we don't really have a strong competition out there. So a pricing in Bangalore market, even for my local to local business, is at a higher price as compared to what I get in Delhi. Despite Delhi having more number of copies, reaching more number of people, with a Bangalore reaching less number of people, right? Economies of scale obviously kick in if you do a frequency deal with us, a large annual deal with us, or a multi-year deal with us. So we pass in some benefits for economies of scale. Uh, there might be a fixed pricing for a certain inventory, like a GNP jacket is like a business class seat, as we often say, right? So there is a fixed pricing for it. We say, irrespective of where you come from, we charge you a certain value. We don't reduce that value. Uh, this is fixed. You take it or leave it. And I don't think in the last one year since I have been taking care of this role, we have lost any client because of a fixed pricing concept as well. Right? And obviously, pricing is dynamic. We hear this day in from day out from our sales <coughs> colleagues saying, you guys have some uh, mood swings. Uh, saying you are charging a different price today, you are charging asking for a different price yesterday, but yes we do that, 
right? It is dynamic. Each client has a different price. Each inventory has a different price. A day of the week has a different price. I might charge more on a Friday to Sunday when I have my leadership is good. When I know the uh, the client wants a better response because you will read the newspaper, you will go to the store to pick up that stuff, right? And if you are a retail only category, you will take up that thing. So my price de depends on the week of the day as well, right? A host of pricing drivers that we as pricing team take care of while pricing a product. So it is the page position, the ad size, the number of insertions that you are talking about, the R print order, R circulation copies in that market, the months you are taking up, talking about, if you are talking about an ad in a peak of October, our Diwali season, right? When all clients uh, move towards print and they want the, their ads to uh, come in Times of India. The pricing will be different, whether it is a color or a black and white ad for a tenders particularly, right? A deal size, my cost to it, how is my competition pricing, the industry sector you belong to. Let's say we don't have a, so let's say we have a category uh, of RO purifiers, right? We don't have too many advertisers with us on who take print. We only have one client from Delhi, let's say Kent and one from Bombay who takes ads with us on ROs, right, from that category. So I will probably be softer on that category so that we can have that category be visible on our print so that other clients also come to us for it. So if I have a Kent RO purifier ad in our paper, probably a LG RO purifier will also come in because we believe in the principle of ad begets ad, right. If you see an ad from your category, you will also want to invest because you can't lag behind your competition. So we also position our pricing at times uh, very differently to the number two player in the industry or a number three player in the industry so that we, we may give him an attractive pricing than the number one player so that he comes and challenges the number one player and then number one player starts to advertise in a bigger way. Yes. An existing versus new client, a new client to onboard maybe we may offer a different pricing. Affinity to print, so a real estate client who have a high affinity to print media, we charge them a higher value. A, a category which has a lower affinity to print, we might charge them a lower price for the same inventory. Same day, everything remaining the same. All of the variables remaining the same. Occupancy, our occupancy on that day, I talked about a spot offer, let's say if my particular inventory is going vacant tomorrow, if I want to build that, pick up that revenue from that vacant seat that will fly off tomorrow because it is all perishable inventory, right? If the newspaper is published and I don't have an ad on a sports page, then I don't make that revenue. So at times we go for a marginal uh, costing approach as well and we price it very differently. Some innovations, so innovation, we have an innovation club, right? Uh, wherein the pricing is obviously on the higher side uh, because of the the form factor of the innovation, right? We have do have some low cost innovations as well that are available, we talk about it. But innovation club entry is at a premium. That's the larger principle. Low cost innovations are available for people and we'll talk about some examples there. Paper quality, JNP, SNP, HQCP, LWC, there are various formats of paper, different GSMs, different quality, which we price differently. Then there are special features that we do uh, on say a special paper, velvet paper, which we print from outside. So recently we did a, just a Pune market on a velvet paper, uh, Times of India Pune, a real estate client, one ad, four pages, how much do you feel you would have charged that client? We charge 80 lakhs for an ad in TY Pune. Just one day, four pages, velvet paper. Because it was a special thing for a real estate client to be with us on that. And we made huge margins on that. Sharad is smiling, I can see that. So, then there are the other larger macro factors. The market share of that client with us. How is that client treating us? How often does he take us? Share of wallet with that particular client. How much revenue market share is he giving us basically? If he is spending 100 rupees in the market, for core all places including TV, digital, radio, print, how much money is he giving to print and how much money is he giving to Times of India publication. 
consumption pattern is he a regular spender does he take a frequency deal with us or will he just take a one off business with us right even one offs are priced differently i might have a client saying this is a one off business you take it so we might charge a very high premium for that because i know he, this guy will not come back right but if i know there is only a limited money on the table and it is a take it leave it from the client we might pick it up even at a discounted value so both one offs we need to know how the read the mindset of the client so that is where our interactions with the, the sales team the business development team becomes very important so that our ears are to the ground to listen that music what is coming from the client side and then we price it accordingly client growth rate how the client is growing how his overall business is doing does he have the money right how does he how is he growing on advertisement spent for us for the market at large industry growth rate how is the industry, that particular industry behaving special day or a event premium if if the client has a launch if he has a store launch uh, retail store launch that is opening up right let's say a luxury brand uh, let's say a subway sachi right wants to open a store in uh, large format store in delhi or a bombay right should how should i price it i know he has a launch he will definitely take an ad with us he can't go with, he can't launch a subway sachi brand store in delhi without a times of india because this is the most premium audience this is the one which will go to his store to buy so i will price it high we won't budge on that deal we will probably continue to negotiate with our sales partners to say that we get the right value right launch versus frequency uh, i'll talk about the marti grant in the coming slides the importance for that brand to advertise with us so sabhi sachi will not take a hindustan times right because he knows the quality of audience that he will get there but vis a vis the quality of audience that he will get in the times of india group then we obviously bundle some non print uh, assets with us whether it is tv whether it is digital so we uh, we make a composite deal to see that we get the more from the client to get more value from his wallet entry barriers and dependents is is there an entry barrier to that client for us for him to advertise on print potential alliances government regulations house and most importantly the agency relationship how does the agency treat me let's say it is a group m right which is the biggest one for us how does that agency treat me if i give that rate to a particular group m on that day will group m come back asking the same rate for any other client or if it's uh, let's say a small agency who will not disturb my regular pricing for other clients so how my relationship with is with the releasing agency is also very important to know if i can make an exception there if i can trust that particular agency buyer so all of this we have just uh, combined in a three pillars saying baseline price price led what is the existing price of the client at which he enjoys up to the inventory right let's say we started uh, time sport investment so just to give you an example time sports wasn't a regular inventory uh, pre covid we started investments sharad team uh, started investments in sports page we did some trials we did some seeding uh, with a particular client and uh, at a low value to position it to do that seeding we saw it as a more as like a sales and distribution expense as a marketing cost for us to get more advertisers there right it was a consumer durable brand we gave it probably at 70% 60% of our regular price today sports page all durable clients come to us you would have seen lg taking their posh their like, creators that sharat showed there right today we are doing 5x of what we do did on in the first year of covid right it's a high double digit revenue that we made from sports pages now which was a zero revenue category for us before covid demand of so for a higher the price because he was an anchor client for me the price today will still be lower than what other clients pay me other clients will pay me a higher price what is the right value for that inventory today but for higher when i am doing the pricing his pricing is different so baseline pricing no we not too higher right now no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> sorry i am interrupting 
First thing, I'm sure you guys now empathize with the sales team, with the pricing team like this. I hope you guys empathize. But there's a clear method to uh, this entire madness. And I think these guys are doing a phenomenal job. The reason I instructed, we have to get a Russian with this. Sure. I've got an indication from a Thai sure. perspective. So, right now we have just uh, on our way to define a machine learning lit pricing. We're just putting all of these algorithms in a machine so that all of this can be automated. We just structured these three pillars on which we are resting our model. So a fine balance is required, a lot of data analytics, a lot of uh, market intelligence coming in, a lot of negotiation coming in between pricing and sales, we talk in day out to see how we price it and get that competitive advantage and make the same happen. So overall, it's neither a science nor an art. It has to be a fine balance and some key pillars of why I say that is because pricing is always for tomorrow. I can pick up a business today at a low value but that I know that business will come back to haunt me uh, asking for the same low value again. So it is always for tomorrow. Plus you have to ensure that whatever price you charge the client, he has to come back. It shouldn't happen that he doesn't find it right. At he doesn't come back again. So repeat business significance is very important for us. right? It has to work for the client. That is what the larger aim is. And yet, make, we have to make money in the process. Client is always at the center stage. I'll talk about differential pricing, some innovation, how we make, how we make more money by innovations. And lastly, having that empathy as Sharad said. So I'll talk about it. So pricing is always for tomorrow. So phone pay, a case study, small case study. Phone pay wasn't really advertising with us. We wanted phone pay to advertise so that other payment companies, other fintech companies also come to us, which did happen. So phone pay we started with a small inventory of a sky bus. We call it a sky bus because it's there on the masthead. We started with a sky bus. The client started liking it. We have printed it to a half page. And then later he upgraded to a jacket. So for us, getting the client on board was the most important thing at that point of time. We won the client, and then now we know we are milking it. Similarly, HSBC, he was taking economic times with us. But he wasn't taking times of India. He was giving odd releases to Hindustan times to tease us, to trouble us. And uh, he wasn't, because he was finding times of getting too expensive as compared to the sun times. What we did was, we entered into a specific five market deal with HSBC to see that we at least onboard him at a low value, but purely on run on space. I know Sharad doesn't like the word run on space, but it means that only if I'm going vacant, then only I will carry your ad. So you can't give me a date topical order saying, publish my ad tomorrow. So we said, okay, I'm giving you a low price. You come with me, but we'll take it only when we are going vacant. So we got him on board. The client started loving it. He's dumped HD now. And he's upgraded to a size with a sky bus. Eight from five, now he's taking eight markets with us. And in this entire process, what has also happened is that because we could price that at a decent value, the position is now confirmed for the client. Right? So it becomes a win-win from that perspective. The client is happy so that he can now give me a date topical order. If he wants to an ad a week later, he can give me a date topical order. He doesn't have to wait saying only if Times of India has space, then only they will carry it. So we now carry it because now the value is good and I can carry it without displacing any other ad. Client is always at the center stage. So we have to define the product offering basis the clients need. An Apple can afford to take a jacket with us for an iPhone because he makes that kind of money there. Because he makes those number of phones that he sells in the country. For a MacBook, he can do that. But can he do that for a AirPods? Yeah, right? This, this is more a pricing product, some 25,000 odd rupees. But still, he sells good numbers. So what can we do to get this, this category with us? Because he doesn't advertise on print for the AirPods. So we, Sharad and team sold an airports uh, on a sports page. 
So a low value product versus a high value product for the same client. Maruti, a launch category, they largely take ads with us. Apart from the dealer business which you see a weekly ads, they largely take, is a launch category, right? When they have a launch, they will come to us, they will pay us whatever we want and they will take a large format ad with us. So I have just put five or six creators out there. But this is for uh, Brazil launch that Maruti did uh, earlier this year, I think sometime in July. But I think there were three more ads of Maruti on that day. I didn't have space on the slide to put that. So the entire newspaper largely had Maruti ads. It was a jacket, a front page ad, a page 3 ad, a time sport ad, another ad on Times techies to show their tech features. So we, where we can position, the sales just position and does a good job. And finally a back page. So you start with a Maruti, end with a Maruti. But how do we get more money from Maruti? Right? Can we sell him another inventory? Our sales team did a good job of getting a frequency deal from Maruti for a safety campaign. Maruti, you all know we got trolled for safety comes recently. So our team pitched them a safety campaign. Right? At a nominal value, but let's say a 30 inserts or 20 inserts of a sky bus premium position which we know Maruti will take at a reasonable value and Maruti did this probably in March itself that they would have taken 10 inserts of this. So we made good money out there. Coming to differential pricing, so let's say there is a variable cost, there is the optimal price which we can sell at and then there is a final price which is a value defined by the customer. It can be any. The client can stay here, stay here, stay here. Right? Whichever, we close deals at different levels, 105, 120, 130, 500, 1000, that this price can be any. This is the value perceived by the client who pays us. So our aim is to maximize this profit triangle. Right? This, how much more you can sell to the client is the, this is the price. So every client has a different price, it can vary from 105 to the fag end of the spectrum. Luxury, classic example here. Luxury is segment. We also want our newspaper because it makes our paper feel good. Right? You're reading a good quality paper with luxury ads. So if there is a Rolex out there, you would want, okay, there is something interesting. So, but luxury clients we price it at a very low value. They have an affordability to pay, but we price them at a lower value because more than them we also want them on our newspapers. But what about the front page occupancy? If these if a client like this occupies a front page at a low value, how do I move him out to accommodate a higher price point? We move him out by upgrading to a back page, a full page. So double the size, maybe save the revenue, but we free up that inventory and make more money out there. So innovation, I think someone talked about a sensorized example. So at times, certain clients who do not prefer print, we get them on board using some innovations like this. Another FMCG client. So you took three pages of Bombay Times, uh, Times of India, uh, sorry, Times All, all the country you took with this kind of ad, paid us just 1.5 CR on a single day for this innovation, which otherwise we won't have got. Innovation on inside pages. Can you see a difference between these two ads? So just a small change from a time sports to a time exports, right? We could play with that masthead and for that play, we could charge 50% more price. There someone who asked actually a question no, around the master trade, did you? No. It was someone asked the question. It goes well and we get, uh, we come on a little more premium there. So, Deal structure, we also play here to see how we can get more. So cash discount is a normal thing which you can give and get business. But what we use is space inside there. So instead of cash, we give space. Space again, we have different deal types when we give a client target based deal or a free ad with a paid ad. But the larger intent is we position the space inside there on pages we want to invest in. So when we started with business page, we now make 3x of what we did pre-COVID on business page. So we started with some small seating investment saying an ad should be seen on a business page so that once the ad is seen, more customers, more clients will want that. Contextual environment on business page to advertise. Today our business page revenue is 3x. 
you have clients like Volkswagen, you have clients like Merck who want a business page. Uh, ET Saturday, not many people read ET Saturday because these are the CEOs who are reading ET on the, in their offices. But we started making some investments and now there are clients, auto clients, luxury clients, higher luxury clients, real estate clients who want an ET Saturday. Lastly, our empathy part. So when we as pricing come to office, we try and leave our personal ego at home so that we don't get into that fight with our sales friends, right? The brand ego remains. We are a leader, Times of India. So we try and retain that brand that we should not we will not sell at a rock bottom price, right? But the empathy towards sales particularly kicks in, and our personal ego goes out of the window. Anyone who in pricing who gets his personal ego can't can't be a right fit for pricing. That's the core. Oh, for that matter, it's functional. Our overall strategy, so I have a premium position pricing, this is where we make the most of money, innovation club premium, affordable premium position options like Skybus, demanded pricing, unlimited inventory, the floating jackets that you saw inside underneath the GMP of that M3M, so those are unlimited inventory so we can price our demand basis. So obviously demand supply is the basics of any pricing, that test has to be, I didn't talk about it because that's like very basic. It's not print specific supplies to our industry, so that means so unlimited inventory we do a demanded pricing, increase occupancy on lots of premium positions, so like a sports page, a business page, or let's say a page seven. So there the price we, we are flexible on the pricing for that. Low cost innovation on inside pages. You saw the sports page example, the time exports is a, a low cost example uh, innovation. Yet it made impact for the client. So the client we did this just on 31st, first day of the IPL. Having made that impact, client is now talking about a 8 insert deal during IPL. And volume frequency deal on inside pages. That's it. Thank you. And as pricing, we also wonder at times how the deal happened at a high price. Hey, we need a good sales people, right? <laughs> so, all connected to them, as pricing, we are all enabling functions, the core function, whatever you call core is sales, so with them, all art, because they are the ones who fight it out. We just try and connect with them to see that we have our ears to the ground and price it right. Okay, guys, I know we are... Any questions? questions you are happy to answer. So, I think, you know, that's uh, the that time. So, that's it, guys. Any questions? Any after thoughts? Any questions around advertising, advertising, rising, sales, anything? Or uh, everyone is too hungry now to <laughs> ask a question. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you.